Are you there? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can I can. Can you see me? I can see you. You look great. You look great too. Are you? I'm looking at your background. This is awesome. uh, my home office here in Michigan, in the United States. We've got in Michigan. Wow. Some Star Wars toys as I'm a collector. You've got the screen up behind you. It would have been tactful to have a C-3PO uh, doll um, there, but I, I guess. <laughs> we'll get to this, of course. Hey, fantastic. How old were you when you saw Star Wars? Oh my, um, the re-releases in the 1990s, I was, I was born in 1989, so when the re-releases came out, that was a big deal in my house. Doesn't really count, frankly. You had to be there at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, speak to me, Brad. Speak to me, talk to me. Sir Anthony Daniels joining us to talk about the book that's released, that's been out, but you had the hardcover, and now there's this whole new release, and you're so excited about this, I'm sure. I, I was tremendously ex excited about the hardcover, which came out about a year ago now. So just in time for that stocking stuffing time, yes, Christmas is going to be here very, very shortly. Just in time for that, you have the, um, the slightly physically smaller, but exactly the same as, as the big book there. Still, it's got its 24 pages of, of photographs, all sorts of little details and things. But actually, having it in paperback reminded me what it was like uh, as a young person, we always had paperbacks. Something that's special about a hardback cover, but this one, the paperback, yeah, you can you can abuse it a bit. It's so amazing to read what you write about there, your whole journey, the story of my life, and of course your life is so much now intertwined with Star Wars. For people now that get an offer to be a part of a Star Wars movie, the answer would be, how quickly can I get to the set? Tell me where I can sign. But for you, that experience was a little bit different. You had some apprehension. <laughs> it's a little cruel to remind me of my, well, how I was back then when I was about 27, I think, because I talk in the book about a phone call from my agent who was talking about a little sci-fi film made by an unknown American, and it was part of a robot, and there wasn't much money, and I said no, and she said, well, yeah, why don't you go, well, actually said, don't be so stupid, go and find out what it's about, and that led, meeting George that day, and seeing Ralph McQuarrie's uh, original design, which is in the book, um, changed my life. How stupid can I be to turn down an offer just because I didn't like the sound of it? Boy, was I lucky because the force, not that I'd heard of it back then, but nobody had heard of it. When I read The Star Wars, as it was called, uh, nobody had ever heard of the Thor, the force. Now imagine, Imagine a world where nobody had heard of the Force. That was a bit. Um, I can't. I was born in 1989. The only world I know is one with Star Wars. Oh, please! Did you have to mention that? There <laughs> is the front cover of the original script that uh, that I read, all by myself. I didn't understand it for a moment, apart from the fact I liked C-3PO. Wow! And so now C-3PO. This is my father's toy, his oh, action figure, my three-year-old son when they, my parents moved out of their house last year, uh, jumped right in the box and said, I, I think he calls you three PCO. And this was the toy, your legs are rarely on. This is a rare moment to see the legs in here. This has gotten a lot of play through generations. How wild is that to know that that's, that's the standard across this world? It is wild, but uh, hey, mine is bigger than yours, okay? It's great that uh, everybody has played with it. Your dad, you and your son. I love it. And I know his limbs will get a bit looser and a bit like he's a bit more fragile and wobbly standing up. But you know, that's like the real thing. That's me too, because time's moved on. But people, I know there's this whole thing about keeping toys in boxes, but hey, they were meant to be played with, so go for it. When, when you were a part of this now final trilogy of the Skywalker saga um, and, and jumped back on the set, J.J. Abrams writes the foreword, of this book and does a beautiful job. Um, the friendship, the respect, the reverence that he has for you, that youthful energy that you carry with you. C-3PO is ageless and you seemingly are ageless as well. Well, it, it always made me smile. Um, some years ago, I was in Detroit uh, hosting Star Wars in concert. And I know many of your viewers will have been there seeing this huge symphony orchestra, the big screen, John Williams music. But every night I used to look up the, the uh, screenshots, the little vignettes from all the films and see Carrie and, and Mark and Harrison 
as they were back in 1976. And I think, oh, wow, <laughs> whatever happened? Uh, but of course, uh, I aged as well, but you can't see it. I've got this face in, in front of mine. Um, right, brilliant on idea. The inside, on the inside, I'm right up with them, I'm afraid. But it's okay. When, when, when you were asked to be such a key part of that final trilogy, um, and again, with the relationship that you had with the previous cast, to know that Harrison Ford would be back, to know that Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher would be back, um, did, did you get goosebumps knowing that this was coming back, or did you have apprehension like you did the first time you signed on? Uh, 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 uh. You, you credit me with too much intelligence. When we did uh, A New Hope, it was a bit of a, a bit of a tricky ride. It was 12 weeks of, uh, let's call it hell. Yes, let's call it hell. And you can read why, not just on the set, but in the environment, because it was a heat wave. We might have been filming in, in Phoenix in the summer for, for the kind of um, feeling I had here. So you can read about that, but then the other dramas of the suit and so on. And so when it was over, it was a bit about moment, and that was it. Um, then, of course, it opened uh, about a year later, and no, that wasn't it at all. There was going to be another film, and then obviously a third one, because it was a trilogy, that much I knew. And then, that's, that's it, I don't have to act with Ewoks anymore. And then many years passed, I mean, maybe 14 years, and there's a phone call again from Leaveston Studios to go and meet George for another trilogy. Wow, how about that? And then when that was over, I thought, yeah, that's the end. Episode three. Six, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Finished it. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Then comes a call from Kathy Kennedy. Would I talk to J.J. Abrams? <laughs> Are you kidding? And finally, and I talk about it in the book, a sad moment where at the end of The Rise of Skywalker, on the set in the studio in England, I finally said goodbye to everybody for the last time. And now I know it's over, as far as the big films go, okay? But it was a bit of a lump in the throat moment, I've got to tell you. To be a part of this culture that has been such a phenomenon, um, for people on the outside, it, it's it's what we remember within our childhood. It's it links us to happy times of going to the theater with family. I mean, even even for these premieres, we we get a group of twenty in our family to go, and we all have our Star Wars shirts on. But this is your life, and you've lived it, and you write about it in the book so passionately with details, and like you said, with some of the photos, and and even just going to Disney World for me now. I I, I went on the Millennium Falcon, and I got chills. I'm curious for you as you wrote this book and you looked back at the stories. Um, is there a moment to you that you're most proud of throughout these nine films that you made? That's a, that's a tricky question, uh, the good question. And I would like to, uh, pr proud, I'll tell you, um, two funny, two very gentle moments. One, and it's being in the costume and, and kind of trying to work out how to act inside that thing. Um, and one is in episode four, New Hope, where Alec Guinness, wonderful man, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, has just been, um, well, kind of disappeared by Darth Vader, you know, that old foof. They actually, um, I don't want to spoil it, but they actually had that fight going on. And then at the end, they had the costume on a string, and they cut the string, and it fell to the floor, as you see. I love that kind of movie effect, because you could do that at home on your cell phone. A lot of people making films now. Uh, the other, so then you have 3PO and the, and the guys getting away in the Millennium Falcon. And um, I do feel 3PO looks incredibly sad. Um, he hasn't got a, got a face to look sad, but you can tell he, he's really hurting there. Well, and that's a credit to you, no doubt. Absolutely, as the brilliant actor I am. Absolutely right. And we didn't rehearse that remark, did we? <laughs> the other uh, moment I'm proud of is again using the suit, uh, again without a face, but there's a moment where Harrison Ford gets a little above himself when I'm talking to the Ewoks, you know, they've just invited us into the family. But Harrison Ford had Solo was being very naughty in interrupting, interrupted once. Oh, uh, okay. Um, interrupted a second time. Um, Yes, mm. interrupted a third time and 3PO looks at him, whips his head around and looks at him with such venom, such fury, such you naughty man. 
And that made me laugh, makes me laugh every time. <laughs> and that took a bit of rehearsal with where my head and neck were positioned. So very tiny moments of being proud of, but I am proud to have been in the whole thing and proud, immensely proud when people come up to me and say, are you C-3PO? And I go, um, <clears throat> not today, obviously, but uh, sometimes yes. And I go, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for my childhood. Oh, actually I'm getting goosebumps as I say that. And it's taken years, years to get to that point where I have realized uh, how much Star Wars meant to other people. Well, that's the beautiful part of it in that I think you have such a, a clear head to look back at the times to know when those good times were. Um, with the stars and with your friends that made these movies with you, you get the gift now to feel like a sports star, to feel like this mega pop star because trading cards in the Star Wars lore have become such a big deal. And I'll admit, I'm a collector and I once pulled an Anthony Daniels <laughs> autograph card. And I think my wife nearly had to swerve the car over because I was screaming and she didn't understand, why are you so excited right now? And I showed her, she goes, oh, that's pretty darn cool. How <laughs> neat is it for you to have your own trading cards and to autograph them for someone? Oh, the whole thing of uh, toys and, and memorabilia, again, is, is amazing. I did, you remind me that I, right at the beginning, I, I went into FAO Schwartz in New York and there was a huge array of <clears throat> Princess Leia and Han Solo and, you know, uh, Luke Skywalker, whatever, and uh, one or two monsters, critters. And I said, and I felt really hurt. I thought it was a, you know, I was being let down again that I was being nixed from the whole thing. And I said to a shop assistant, you know, how you've got all these layers and, and, and solos and, and Luke Skywalker, but you don't have any three beers. And she said, oh, they sell out immediately. <laughs> right. That's fantastic. Stupid, stupid, stupid. I am curious though, do you, do you ever keep any of those trading cards of your own to think of yourself as a, as a sports star? <laughs> no, not really. I, yeah, I have them because they're useful to give to people. But um, I don't really keep, I mean, some of the stuff in the book, uh, the pictures are from the attic here in London. They're, I mean, there's pieces of, uh, I'm remembering that pieces of Millennium Falcon, I think, which there's a story of how I rescued the, the, the Falcon from the flames. And, and I felt really bad about that. So for no reason, I just, I just picked them up. There's scraps of plastic and yeah, kind of meaningless until you know the history of of why they were there. There are some genuine pieces of the Millennium Falcon. And they were generally bits uh, that were lining the corridor. I think you had all these tubes going on. But as I say, um, I felt like they were religious items until I realized that one, and very, very special, and specially made for this wonderful ship, the Millennium Falcon, until I saw on one side punched in the plastic, um, Ford Motor Corporation. They were bits of car dashboards. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a downer there. Well, another connection to Detroit, something else our viewers are gonna- <laughs> Oh, I never thought of that, it's very good. <laughs> when we get clear of this pandemic and get healthy again, I'm sure I speak for everybody in Detroit to know that uh, you'd be very welcome back here and any visit, any Comic-Con, any reason you wanna be back here. I will be back because, you know, we're all going through COVID, for better or worse, we're dealing with it. Every individual is finding a way of dealing with it. Over the years, I have grown to love American and Americans, and I will be back. And until then, you must wait. And um, may the force be with you all. <laughs> An absolute pleasure to talk with you, Sir Anthony. Oh, the right. book is in paperback. I am C-3PO, like you said. A perfect time to pick it up and get it for a family member. I thoroughly enjoy just the positive nature of it. Look at that. It's perfect. Hey, it's it had to happen. <laughs> Um, thank you so much yeah let's stay positive okay absolutely yes sir good luck thank everyone you. bye brad